beloved in Christ, you welcome to another episode of Hope TV Sabbath School, the English edition. This is your most um, in-depth and lively Bible discussion of the Sabbath School lessons. Um, by the perfect sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, I trust you are doing wonderful and you had a good week. We, if you're joining us for the first time, or if you are tuning into Hope TV, for the first three months of the year, from January to March, we're studying the book of Hebrews. And um, this week, we're looking at lesson nine. Lesson nine, the title is Jesus, Our Perfect Sacrifice. Jesus, Our Perfect Sacrifice. This lesson, um, as other topics we've studied before, continues to assure us of our salvation in our Lord Jesus Christ, the perfect sacrifice that he's made for us. And so you're welcome to um, this week's study. Isaac Watts writes, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride, where the whole realm of nature mine, that were an offering far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. That is the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ that we're talking about. We'll go for a special song. When we come back, I'm going to introduce my panelists who are going to help in the discussion of this week's lesson. Welcome back. I believe you enjoyed the song. And so this week, I'm reviewing the lesson with Mid-South Ghana Conference. 
um, the headquarters in Cape Coast, yes. Mid South Ghana Conference. And I'm glad to be joined by Pastor Julius Josephimos, who is the Trifono District Pastor. Pastor, you're welcome. Thank you, Pastor. I trust um, you are good. Sure, by the grace of God. And how's your flock? They are all doing perfectly well by the grace of God Almighty. All right. We thank God. We also have our beautiful sister, Madame Helena Alia. Yes. Who is from Cape Coast, who worships at Cape Coast Central Church, also in Mid South Ghana Conference. Madame Helena, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Pastor. I hope you go. By His grace. Good to see you. And God Thank bless you. you for making time to um, help in the discussion and the review of the lesson for the benefit of our viewers. So, beloved, kindly bow your heads as we pray with um, our sister Helena. Shall we please bow our heads for prayers? Our Father in heaven, we thank you very much for this opportunity given us to dip deeper into your words. We pray for understanding. We pray for our cherished viewers. We pray you bless them with understanding too. In Jesus' mighty name have I prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Okay, so as I said, we are on our ninth lesson or the ninth episode of um, the first three months study which is centered on the book of Hebrews and the topic that we are dealing with this week is Jesus the perfect sacrifice in fact the the, the whole of, of the book of Hebrews has been um, focused much on the on Jesus we've looked at Jesus our faithful brother we've looked at Jesus the giver of rest Jesus, our faithful priest, Jesus, um, the mediator of the new covenant. And we're looking at Jesus, the perfect sacrifice. So it's all about Jesus. We want to look at how the, the sacrifice of Jesus is perfect and what benefits it has for the human race and for Christians in these last days. So we look at um, the foundational scripture for the week's lesson, which is found in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. Sister Helena, can you take it for us? Yes, please, Pastor. And please, let's hear the word of God from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. I read, For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 If we are to repeat it, for by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Helena, what came to your mind when you read this text? Okay. Thank you very much, Pastor. Um, after reading this text, I picked three things or three words mm -hmm. from this text. It says, for by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. My first word is perfected, mm -hmm. and then those who are being sanctified and also forever. Okay. With this test alone, it tells you that there was some kind of sanctification ongoing, mm. but it wasn't perfect and it wasn't forever. Okay. So there was one special offering that was made that made it perfect and also forever. All right, thank mm -hmm. you so much. That, that, that is interesting, but we will dig deeper Very right, deep as we go it. ahead. Yeah. Pastor, what's your thoughts? All right. On the, uh, on the key text. All right. Thank you, Pastor. And even the, the title. All right. Thank you, Pastor. Jesus, the perfect sacrifice. Uh, as our sister read from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14, uh, there are some things, as she said, three key words are much important. Mm. Uh, uh, one, we are looking at perfected. Two, offering. Okay, so I will make it even four. Mm -hmm. So offering, perfected, forever, and then sanctified. Um, it means, one, by looking at it, there were several offerings that were being offered mm. in the ancient times. But it comes one, which is perfect enough 
All right. That means it supersedes each and any other um, offering that was being offered. Mm. And then, secondly, um, we we have the word perfected. Perfected means that there was no blemish. It was excellent. Okay. And third, we can also find the word forever. Mm. Forever means eternity. Yes. It lasts without ending. Mm. And so when we take the last word, uh, which is sanctified, uh, for those being sanctified, sanctified is a great word um, that means that people who are eager and are ready to imitate the footsteps of Christ mm -hmm. are being sanctified. Mm. What I mean is that um, by our own you know, natural you know, being, mm. we cannot be sanctified because we are sinners born right. Uh, right from our mother's womb. Okay. And that once we have made up our mind to imitate Christ, who is the holy or the perfect being, we are also sanctified by the mere that we are imitating uh, for his four steps. Okay. So uh, these are the four key ways that I think uh, we can just you know, look at it mm. as we read the text. Mm. So um, obviously we can see that the centrality of the cross is um, present in the, t in the text, in the key yes. text. Yeah. Yes. We know that we're talking about Jesus Christ and his sacrifice or his offering happened at no other place other than the cross. the cross. And it happened once. Unlike the previous times, as you have said, where there was repetition, there had to be repetition of sacrifice. offerings and sacrifices. This time, it is one, once and for all. And even though it is once, it has the ability to do even more than the repeated offerings we're doing. Yes. Um, that is perfection. The sanctified. So the, the, the idea that man found a guilty and executed um, the, a person, a man found guilty and executed on a cross, should be worshipped as God was offensive yes. to the ancient mind. In other words, the idea that a person or someone who was sacrificed, I mean, who was uh, murdered on the cross, who died on the cross should be worshipped, in this case Jesus. It was offensive to the ancient mind. And so they were not, I mean, even the early Christians were not so comfortable in using the cross as a symbol of salvation. So they, 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 they resorted to other symbols, symbols like the peacock which symbolized immortality, right? Sure. Yes. You know, the dove, the athlete's victory power, and the fish, you know. And other, later on, we are told that other themes appeared, like Noah's Ark, Abraham sacrificing um, the ram instead of Isaac, Daniel in the lion's den, Jonah being spit out by the fish, and others, other symbols. These were considered to be more appropriate to represent our salvation other than the cross because the cross was considered as a symbol of shame yes. and you know um, people didn't like it people didn't like it but later on later on the cross became a great symbol or emblem of Christianity and in fact Paul simply called the gospel the word of the cross, the word of the cross. And I believe that as we speak now, the cross is widely um, considered as the most powerful symbol and emblem of Christianity. Yes. I know some still have some weird ideas about the cross, associating it with other uh, <laughs> pagan systems, and other things, but hey, we still believe it's not the cross, but what it is representing. representing. That is yes. what we are looking at. Okay, so we go to 
Um, the fact that why were sacrifices needed? Why were sacrifices needed? And so, um, Helena, take us through the lesson. Um, thank you very much, Pastor. Um, before we get into the lesson proper, personally, I think that um, if there is no sin, sacrifice will not be needed. Mm. And so there is the necessity for us to offer a sacrifice after we have sinned. Mm. It tells us that there is the need for sacrifice because there is sin. The lesson introduces us with um, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. That is mm. what the lesson wants us to have a look at. Okay. And so we are going to read Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Let's hear the word of God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Um, from this test, the reason why sacrifice was needed that Jesus had to come to be a substitute for us, one, was to save the transgressors of the First Testament, and also two, so that we will receive um, the promise of the internal inheritance. Okay. And so in ancient Near East, that is Babylon, Syria, and the rest, we realized that they cherished something, mm. and that was covenant. Mm. It was something that, um, existed between two people or two countries. They will come together, make themselves some promises and oaths, and then they ratify that through sacrifice. Mm. And so there is always a penalty after every sacrifice. And with a sacrifice, each party has a role mm. to play. Mm -hmm. God made a covenant with Abraham. That is in Genesis chapter 15. And also God made a covenant with Israel. Mm. God fulfilled his part of the covenant by giving the Israelites the promised land. So it was up to the Israelites to also do their part mm. of the covenant. But the Sabbath school is making us aware, or we are all aware from the Bible that mm. they you were. The lesson. Yes. Okay. The lesson mm. wants us to be aware that God did fulfill his part but the Israelites were not. Mm. And so God seeing them going through the penalty that was attached to the various covenants, he felt it and he was not so happy about that. So God initiated or instituted sacrifice. Mm. So it will take the penalty or the pain they had to go through from it because our God is love. And so in summary, what I want to say is that sacrifice is indeed needed because we have broken a covenant, mm. or there was a covenant that was broken. Okay, thank you. Pastor, would you want to add something to that? Yes, I want to add something little to what our sister um, said. Um, looking at um, why were sacrifices needed, as um, she just elaborated, we can see that God, when he called Abraham, he promised him. So there was some kind of covenant between him and the, his descendants. However, when God um, did his part of the promise, the descendants of Abraham broke the covenant. Mm. And because of that reason, uh, something needs to be done to you know, reconcile the two parties. And that is why um, sacrifices comes in. Mm. If we read Romans chapter 3, mm -hmm. verses 23, mm. uh, this text says, says, uh, says that, um, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Mm. Yeah. Why have all sinned? It's because our forefathers broke the covenant between God and his people, that the descendants, mm. of which we have become also partakers of it. Mm. And so uh, sacrifices were needed in other to reconcile and to avenge the sins that um, we have committed. Okay. Sure. Okay. The, the lesson brings us forward to the time of the Israelites, which the, we, we trace their fathers, I mean, their um, lineage to um, Abraham. But 
bef even before we come to the children of Israel, we know that right from the time Adam transgressed or sinned, there was a plan of salvation you know, rolled out, right? Sure. Yeah. And that plan of salvation was anchored on sacrifice. Yes. The first sacrifice that was made. And so even sacrifice existed before the, the Israelites. Are we, are we, are we, yes, yes, that yes, 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 that's yes, true. It. Yeah, true. Uh, that's true. Just that um, the reason why the lesson is focusing so much on that of Israel is because after the Abrahamic covenant, the next major covenant was the, the covenant Israel. at Sinai with the children of Israel. Israel. Mm -hmm. And so um, in the context of covenant, um, it becomes a big deal, right? Yes. Yes. Becomes a big deal. But the, 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 what makes it a big deal is the law. So we are asked, how can we see here how the law is so central to the gospel message? All right. Uh, the law is very key in the salvation uh, message. Mm. In other words, in other words, we want to look at the painful dilemma that God found himself. What problem did he need to solve? All right. God loving his people. Yes. Planning how he will create a beautiful earth for his people to dwell in peace. Mm. But along the line, those that he has intended and, has, and, and in reality also created that beautiful platform or atmosphere and the earth for violating his orders. And so this reason, it was so painful to his heart that how come that people that I have loved from the very foundation of the earth violate my orders in order for them to even live in peace. Mm. And so that was the situation God found himself. Mm -hmm. That's the people he loved so much. Mm. They have, you know, disappointed him in that manner. They have disobeyed. Disobeyed and that he, ha he has been disappointed by those mm. um, he created mm. to enjoy the fruits of the land. Mm. I mean, every good is on the land. Mm. And as a and result of the disobedience, disobedience, they ought to die. They, they ought, ought to, to die. die. But yes. he loves them at the same time. Sure. Yes. So yes. then, okay, then let me institute the law so that by the law, now you can know that even though they knew that uh, if when you read Genesis chapter 2, I think verse 20, uh, 17, when God created Adam and Eve, mm. he told them, the day thou eat this fruit, thou shalt surely die. Mm. And so they knew even that time there was a law that you would die. But it comes to a point that, well, it can also happen that Adam and Eve didn't know what death is even about, all about. But it pained God but that's for, for, for that reason, because it pained God. And since he's also a merciful God, mm. he needed to institute something. But mm. even that had been planned before the time. All right. And All right. so okay. even though he pained God, mm. he had a plan in place for, for, his, for uh, his people to redeem them back to his side. All right. Pastor, so sorry. he has to save the people, but at the same time, uphold yes. the sanctity of the, law. of the law in that case something must be done sure yes. helena that is exactly what i wanted to say okay. so i think we should continue. okay all right so let's look at um pastor let's look at the diverse kinds of sacrifices that existed and their significance and how they all tie in with the perfect sacrifice that jesus offered all right, looking at the diverse kinds of sacrifices. That's Monday's lesson. Monday's lesson, yeah. sure. Uh, when you read Leviticus chapter 1, Leviticus chapter 2, Leviticus chapter 3, and the rest, it depicts the kind of sacrifices that needed to be offered by the people of Israel. Mm. One, uh, we had the bent offering or the holocaust offering. Okay. And it was required that the whole animal be consumed on the altar. And it represented Jesus whose life was consumed for us yes. all. Mm. 
And so that is that. And we, we can see that from on the cross or on the tree. When he was crucified, he died. His whole being, not part of it. Mm. So it was a symbolic, as the book of Hebrew is a symbolic, depicting some symbols and what it represents. And two, the grain offering, which was a gift of gratitude for God's provision of sustenance for his people. Mm. You see, when we, we sinned, we ought to, to die because that was paid the law. If yeah. you sin, you, you need to be dead to die. Mm -hmm. But the then, wages of sin the is wages death. of sin is dead. The salary that sin pays is death. death. But then, God said no. Um, Jesus on the cross, he made a provision of the sustenance of his people. Even though mm. you have broken the law, you needed to die, but I have made a provision for you. Okay. So that was what Jesus was representing mm. whilst on the cross. As the grain offering, right? The grain offering. Mm. And thirdly, peace or fellowship offering. And that was a communal, a communal meal with friends and family to celebrate the well-being provided by God. That is stated in Leviticus chapter 3. Mm. And we can see on the cross that Jesus dying on the cross was once and for all, as Hebrews chapter uh, 10 verse 14 states, mm -hmm. it, it was once and for all. Mm. He did that in order to reconcile the entire human race. And so we see it there. Even though in the ancient time we have that grain offering, Jesus did that. Sorry, the, the peace and the fellowship offering, mm. Jesus uh, did that. Then we come to the other, the third, uh, the fourth offering. Mm. Uh, that was the sin or purification offering. And it was used to expatiation or it, it, is, it, is provi it provides an expatiation for sin, which means that um, you, 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 you are being um, like, it, it, it looks as if you, you, you had no hope. Mm -hmm. You had no hope. But then God wanted to purify you to, to make you more like himself. Mm. And so uh, the uh, sin or purification offering provided on the cross by Jesus Christ is, a, is, is, is the same Christ, as right? what it was. That is it. Mm. And then we, the, the last one, we can look at the guilt or the reparation uh, offering. Uh, which also uh, gives us the insight that even though we sinned, Christ was ready to forgive us. Mm. Because that kind of offering was to be offered in order to be forgiven. And right. so that we can concern. see that in that Jesus Christ did that. He forgave the entire human race and then he reconciled the entire human race to God whom we have broken the covenant with. Mm. Yeah. So, so we have the ministry, Jesus um, Christ, you know, partaking or giving us, showing us an example of the ministry of reconciliation. Sure. Reconciliation. Okay. So Helena. Yes, Pastor. We are asked that the sanctuary sacrifices teaches us that the experience of salvation is more than just accepting Jesus as our substitute. We also need to feed on him, share his benefits with others, and provide reparation to those we have wronged. You want to share um, some thoughts on the yes. Monday's lesson? Yes. The little I want to say is the Sunday's lesson made us aware why sacrifice is needed. Yes. And then because a covenant is broken, there is the need for a sacrifice to be made. That is why the Israelites instituted all these types or kinds of sacrifices. Mm. God instituted it. God instituted it for them. It for yeah. them. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm. So there is the need for all these sacrifices. But Jesus Christ, as we can see, it is five. Yes. But Jesus Christ came to combine all of them mm -hmm. for us. So we don't go through all this. Pastor, imagine you're a family member. <laughs> if you are a family. Yes. Uh, like you have wife, mm -hmm. you have children. children. And then you sin, let's mm -hmm. say for a day. Mm -hmm. Your children too does the same thing and you are to offer a sacrifice for them. Mm. Are we going to get that money to do that? Mm. And then how much money would you spend on your children who are dependent on you, your family members and all that? So it means that God has done a lot for us and we shouldn't take it for granted. For granted. So we should let people know 
what God has done for us mm. so that they can also come and then testify and share our joy. Wonderful. Wonderful. So diverse kinds of sacrifices. And these were the offerings that Paul will refer or describe them as drink and meat offerings, sure. which were a shadow of things, things to come. come. Having met their fulfillment in the sacrifice or the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, there is no need for you to continue in um, rendering these sacrifices and offerings or rituals again. Unfortunately, during Paul's day, the, one of the reasons why um, he wrote all these under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit was in defense of Christianity because Judaism was still ongoing. And Judaism, the Jewish leaders were not ready to accept Jesus of Nazareth as the Messiah, the promised Messiah who died on the cross, bringing an end to all those um, rituals and ceremonies that they were performing. You understand? Mm -hmm. But thankfully, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, even though Paul contextually was writing this to defend Christianity or the, to, to um, expose the death of Jesus Christ, it has let us also understood the, the relevance of Christ's death, you know, in a special way, in a special way. So let's go to, once again, Jesus' perfect sacrifice. Jesus' perfect sacrifice. So, Helena, how is the sacrifice of Jesus perfect? Thank you very much. Um, the sacrifice of Jesus was perfect. The Sabbath school or the lesson introduced us to it with Hebrews chapter 7, verse 27. I would like us to read. Okay. Hebrews chapter 7, verse, verse 27. 27. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who, who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once for all when he offered up himself. Thank you very much, Pastor. And also Hebrews chapter 10, mm -hmm. verse 10. Hebrews chapter, chapter 10, verse, verse 10. 10. It says from the World English Bible, okay. it says, by which will we, by which mm -hmm. will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Okay, thank you very much. So as the caption is, the perfect sacrifice. And from the beginning, we were talking about the sacrifice that Christ made for us mm. on the cross. So those two tests, the lesson was trying to compare the two. Mm. That is the sacrifice that were being done mm. in the olden days and mm. what Christ came to do for us. Let so, me help you by going back to verse 9. Okay. Okay, of Hebrews 10. Okay. Yes, we read verse 10. Let's yeah. go back to verse 9. Before the verse 10, he says, Then he has said, Behold, I have come to do your will. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> so there was a yes. first sacrifice. Yes. So why should Christ come? It means that the first sacrifice wasn't really a perfect one. Mm. Why was it not a perfect one? Because it was being led by humans who do not stay forever. Mm -hmm. They passed on. Aaron came. Eliezer came, Phinehas, and the rest, mm. because they don't have eternal life. It's only God who has that. So what Christ came to do on the cross for us was forever. Because he lives forever, so he did it once and for all. Mm. Also, we can also see that the Levitical priest offers sacrifices daily and yearly. Mm. If it was okay, why were they doing the daily one and at the same time when the year ends, they does the same thing? It tells us that it wasn't so perfect. What Jesus Christ came to do on the cross for us was forever. It was once. He did it just once and for all. And also what Christ did was superior. In the olden days, the blood of a lamb or an animal is used. Mm. But in this case, a superior person. Mm. Jesus Christ uses blood. The Son 
of God. He left his divinity up, came down to do this for us. So the blood of Jesus is so precious mm. than that of the animals and the other things we were using for the sacrifice in the olden days. So it tells us that Jesus combining all this into one makes it perfect. Mm. Jesus Christ did not come and die um, for our sins and also to show gratitude to God like the different different kinds of mm. sacrifices that were being done by the Israelites. He came to do it once and for he merged everything together and then did it for us. It makes it very perfect and it's being done once and for all. Mm. It's not that you, um, he did that some years back and then he will do it again. He did it once and for all. It makes it perfect and then he what the priests were doing, they are humans. Mm. They are also, um, I mean, sinful. And so what at all can a human do that would be perfect? The only one that can give us something that is perfect is Jesus Christ. Mm. So that is why we are saying that the sacrifice he offered us was the perfect one. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Pastor, we are talking about, all, we are making all these um, this comparison, not to so much make it appear or to, as it were, castigate the old system, because it was God himself who in his wisdom instituted it. But he intended that it would function for a temporal moment until the fulfillment, I mean the fullness of the time will come where Jesus will come, right? In, in human form and offer himself once and for all. So um, that, 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 that emphasis is, is very important. But in all of these, in all of these, just as previously, even though God instituted those things, in terms of principle, the old and the new, the principles are the same. Is that not so? Yeah. Sure. They were all centered on Jesus. Sure. But Israel missed the focus. Is it possible that in our time, in our days, the focus is still on Jesus, but we can, human system can um, overshadow that focus and let us miss the real object, who, who is Jesus? Highly possible, Pastor. Very possible. Uh, why am I saying that? You see, humans are fallible. Mm. And sometimes uh, we may think we are doing something for God. However, we may be doing it for, uh, for ourselves or for our own interest or even for our own gains. I see. Uh, you see, Paul, before becoming a Christian, mm -hmm thought he was doing it for God. Yes. However, he missed the mark until God or Christ met him on the road to Damascus that he actually came to a realization that really I was missing the mark. Mm. And so no matter how it is now, what God has done for us now, I mean, we can see, I mean, it's all over. Some mm. pastors are even behaving as if they are God themselves. Yeah. And so, Though God has instituted that perfect sacrifice for us, mm. which you know cleanses us from our conscience because the old ones or the, uh, the first covenant was not in that perfect to deal with that, mm. but nevertheless, human nature and how Satan has always been using some tricks to you know persuade us to think some other way um, is persuading some people. Mm. to think. And there's one thing that I want to, some people say that, oh, we are under grace, and we are not under law. Yes. And uh, it is something that is uh, persuading some people to sin. Mm. Most Christians say, oh, Christ is with worship in our heart is not by law and other things, but we should be very careful. Um, if it, is, it was not necessary, mm. Christ wouldn't have done that for us. So we are being mindful how we take the grace of God. Mm. He who did not neglect his own son mm. to be killed or sacrificed on the cross, mm. 
then we should it, it, it should tell us something that no despite the fact that he's merciful ever merciful he's also justice All right. and that's if that perfect gift that he offered for us when we read um, John um, 3 16 for God um, so, so loved, loved the world, the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son mm. so he so loved the world and that is why he gave his only begotten son because the old system, even though it was perfect, God instituted that, but as you said, it mm. was temporary, yes. and it was not in itself mm. perfect, perfect in a way. Yeah. And that is why uh, our sister had. And one thing we can also add to it is that what Christ did on the cross provides nourishment for our spiritual life. You see, if um, we have an assurance that our debt has been paid once and for all, I mean, we, 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 we are much confident enough mm. to approach God. Yeah. But then if we, we know that, okay, we sin today, uh, the, the priest will go and then offer sacrifice. The following year, he will go and the, or the, the year end, the priest will go and offer another sacrifice. Then it means that our conscience will still be. But if we believe that or we know that Christ has done this for us once and for all, then it gives us the courage mm. that then we are bold enough to approach God. That is why we are told that even Jesus' sacrifice first provided salvation yes. to those in the past. Yeah. That is the, the Israelites or the Jews. And then for those who came after us. But Helena, let me ask you. You know, this thing that we are talking about, <laughs> Jesus' perfect sacrifice, is not new to Christians. Yes. It's not new to the Christian community, right? And for other religions, people of other religions, say Islam or other religions, they may not appreciate it so much. Yes. Because in the first place, fundamentally, they don't even mm -hmm. accept or believe that Jesus is the Son of God and all of that. I want to know or ask that accepting the perfect sacrifice of Jesus, does it lie in just mere shouting of Lord, Lord, Jesus as Lord, Lord, or mentioning his name. Does it, ju does it just lie in that? Thank you very much, Pastor. It is not... Calling on the name Lord, Lord, no. Lord, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you very much. It is not really on just calling the name of God. What Christ did for us was very costly. And then what he did for us has given us that courage and boldness to go to the Father freely. Mm. And so we have to value that very well. It's not about calling the name of God and all that, but the most important thing is, how are you seeing the cross? Do you value what Christ did for you? Or you are just taking it as now, I have the chance. Mm. Well, things that were, to say, expensive in the olden days, now I have it on a silver platter. So I'll keep on sinning and sinning and doing what I want. No, mm. we have to focus on the cross. God didn't take it easy. He went through a lot. It cost him a lot mm. to, I mean, die for us on the cross. So if we focus on the cross, we will be able to do what is right and take what God did not for, we will not take it for granted. For granted. Yes, we don't have to take what God did for granted. By so doing, then it means that we are putting actions into it, mm -hmm. but not only calling on the name of God, mm. because we are saved and we are under grace, we are under grace, we go about doing what we like. You are already on the Wednesday's lesson, the cross and the cost of forgiveness, right? And um, when we add the heavenly ministry or the ministry of Jesus Christ in the heavenly sanctuary and the two faces, as it were, in the uh, earthly sanctuary. sanctuary, then perhaps it will make more sense, okay. or we will appreciate it so much. So can you do that for us? Okay, so the Wednesday lesson, yes. the, the cross, two faces. the two faces, yeah. the cross and the cost of forgiveness. Um, there is a text here we have to read. I think we have to read um, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22 and then 23. Okay. Yeah. Hebrews 9, 22. Okay. And 23. So it reads, according to the law, nearly everything is cleansed with blood, and apart from shedding of blood, there is no remission. 23. It was necessary, therefore, 
that the copies of the things in the heavens should be cleansed with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices yeah. than these. Yes. Thank you very much. So um, the earthly sacrifice or the, in the earthly sanctuary, you go with um, an animal or some, whatever you want to use for your sacrifice, you confess your sin on that thing. And if it's an animal, it is being killed. And then the priest will take the blood and then mm -hmm. go through that process. When we confess our sins on the animal, it was done in the sanctuary. So in other words, it kind of, it contaminates the place. Mm -hmm. The place gets contaminated or stained mm -hmm. with sin. Mm -hmm. That is why every year they will just... Or transferred. Or transferred. To the sanctuary. Thank you. That is the exact way. Mm -hmm. The sins or our sins will be transferred mm -hmm. to the sanctuary. So mm -hmm. there is the need for cleansing of the earthly sanctuary. Okay. In other words, what it means is that now Christ has given us the opportunity to come to him freely. And so when we go to God to ask for forgiveness of sin, when he forgives us, he, in other words, takes the, the pain or mm -hmm. takes the penalty mm -hmm. of our sin upon himself. And that is very costly. That is why he left his divinity, as I said earlier on, mm -hmm. to come down to die for us. For us. Okay. So, Pastor, the, so forgiveness has a cost. Yes. Right? Sure. And the cross showed it. So what are we to take from it? All right. Uh, the cross. Mm. The cost of forgiveness. In fact, um, Christians glory in the cross. Mm. Why am I saying so? Um, if it wasn't for the cross, we, we wouldn't have had any hope for the future. Mm. And we this can is say even the entire human race, right? Oh, yes. Sure. Yes. The cross is for the entire human entire race. Entire human race. Yes. Thank you for, for mm. that. Entire human race. Mm. If it wasn't for the cross, in fact, uh, the entire human race mm. would have been hopeless. Yes. That I should put it that way. Mm. Now, looking at the lesson, as our sister has already uh, gone through with us, we have the heavenly sanctuary and then the earthly okay. sanctuary. And the things that we used to go on there, you buy an animal and you confess your sin on the animal, the priests you know, offer the sacrifice to God, and it is assumed. And that is what God said. Mm. And your sins will be forgiven. And at the end of the year, the two animals, Azizo and the other one, then uh, one is left to go and the other one is killed to offer the whole bent uh, offering. Mm -hmm. However, if we look at uh, it in two ways, you see, those who were given the opportunity, or all of them were given the opportunity, all right, but those who confessed their sin during the year showed their loyalty to God by observing a solemn rest mm -hmm. and afflicting themselves on the day of atonement. Very when important. You read, yeah, when you read Leviticus 16, um, 29 to 31, that one, it, well, that was it. But the those, key word is loyalty. Sure, right? Right. Right. loyalty. Sure. And those who did not show loyalty would be cut off. And so those who thought, oh, I mean, um, we are saved by grace, or so mm. whether the cross or no cross, we can do or worship God by our own ways or means. So it's a caution to us all that the cross cost us so much. It cost God so much mm. for the entire human race. Because seeing uh, the God himself, Christ, mm -hmm. being hung on the cross. So if you really account in Matthew and uh, Mark, Luke, and John, it depicts that even the earth couldn't see its creator being tortured that you know, way. Yeah. And so, the sun mm -hmm. became dark, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and even there was some earthquake mm -hmm. at that moment. Yeah. So it tells us something that um, there is a cost mm. of forgiveness. Then, Pastor, add for us, what does that tell us, or what does that say about the judgment and the character of God, as we wrap up? All right. Um, you see, God is ever merciful. Mm. He loves us so much. But that doesn't mean that we should take his message or his word for, for, for granted. Mm -hmm. He said, the soul that sins will surely die. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing he could do about it. And that caused his own son to come and die mm -hmm. uh, in our place. And so even though God is ever merciful, 
he's also justice or just. Mm. And so all the entire race should understand that the fact that Jesus Christ has paid that perfect um, or has made that perfect sacrifice on our behalf doesn't mean that we should just, you know, take it for a ride. Mm. Because God, in as much as he is merciful, he is also justice. And so he could not deny his own son to mm. die on our seed. And it means that if we sin, then we should be ready to face the penalty. But for now, I mean, we all have the grace. Yeah. By the grace means that once that we are living, we have the chance to approach God, confess our sin, and he ever merciful will show us mercy. That's why um, First Peter, uh, First John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just, and just to forgive us our mm. sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. So the character of God is that he is ever merciful, he is, God is love, but then he's oh. also uh, he justice. Just. He's just a just God. His and law, that his law cannot be sure. Should be upheld. Be sure. Upheld. Okay, so Helena, final comments. Okay, thank you, Pastor. So um, with the character of God and judgment, like Pastor said, is too merciful and just. Mm. He being merciful is he dying on the cross for us. He's still doing it for us. That is, he's interceding on our behalf. Mm -hmm. And he is just. That is why on the judgment day, the books will be open and whatever that we did will be made known. Mm. And so God came to die for us so that we will be saved. Okay. We shouldn't take what God did for us for granted. Mm. It's was so costly for him mm. to to offer us that sacrifice so we should value it all right we should really appreciate what god did on the cross for us okay thank you once again pastor julius yes, and um helena our dear sister so beloved you have seen from our discussion from our study of the bible of the book of hebrews what Christ has done for us. And this week I was, I was thinking, when I was reading the Bible, I was studying the script, um, the, the lesson, why do I even say, by the grace of God? I don't need to say that, because there's no other God who has grace than the Christian God, the Bible God. So the grace, in other words, there's no religion that boldly claims that it's God came to offer himself or die for his people. No religion. And so grace is unique and peculiar to the Christian you know, um, claim and, and, and the plan of salvation as we find in the Bible. That tells us how unique we are and how important, how God values us. Therefore, let us continue to trust in him. Remembering that forgiveness comes at a cost, and God is bent on preserving his character of love and justice. Righteousness and justice at the same time. So we have to, we have to choose his side and exercise loyalty to him. So be, before we take the closing prayer, um, Pastor, there, is there any important announcement um, or information for the conference? All right. Um, actually, I'm only, you know, greeting my president, okay. Pastor Amonsa, and right. the officers, Pastor Garnet and the Pastor uh, Ahi, and All then right. my district um, elder as well, Elder okay. Manasi, uh, right. my wife also. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, it's Very good important. you added your wife. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Pastor, then give us the closing prayer. All right. Let's pray. Merciful Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful for giving us the insight to your message. You love us so much and that you want us to know how much you love us. As we have gone through this lesson, we pray that the souls over there who have not yet seen how much you have sacrificed for them to see your perfect sacrifice and imitate that same sacrifice. We pray for all our listeners those who are going through a lot, the devil is putting them into so much stress and using them in diverse ways. We pray for you to redeem them.
because you have already done that on the cross for us. Mm -hmm. We pray that help all our listeners and grant them the salvation you have always been using for all your you know, people who always come to your presence. We pray that as we have dealt with this lesson, our attitude towards your grace will change so that we see how you know, costly forgiveness costs on the cross so that we can also live our lives as an expectation to what you want us to live. Help us, O oh Lord, and bless us, all our listeners, and us all, for us to see your glory when you come your second time. We thank you for an answer prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Save your name. 